Good morning. My name is Stefan Heinen. I'm product manager at Mitutoyo Europe in charge of small tools, data management hardware, and height measuring instruments. So first of all, I would like to apologize for my bad English, but I hope my explanations will be roughly understood. So uh, today, this morning, I would like to bring you our uh, height measuring instrument, uh, Linear Height LH600, a little bit closer to you. For example, I would like to explain how to make a part program, how to make single measurements. I would like to explain the accessories and so on and so on. So uh, the linear height, you can see behind me here on the granite plate. So this is our linear height LH600. So beside this, you can see another height gauge, which is called QM height. So what is the difference between the linear height and the QM height? So first of all, the biggest difference between the two instruments is the linear height has a high, is a high accuracy measuring instrument. So this one is high accurate as well, but I think is a, is a level below the linear height. So uh, another difference between the two different instruments is that um, with the QM height, it's impossible to make a 2D measurements, for example, it's impossible to make um, a part programs, to execute part programs. There is no statistical functionality inside and so on and so on. So this is purely for single measurements. For sure, you can make diameter measurement, height measurement, you can calculate distance between two circles and so on. But the functionality uh, is, a, is a much lower than this one here. So this is a multifunctional type. And this one is how to say is a standard functionality type. Yeah? So, but this morning um, I would like to concentrate on the LH600, this one here. So this is in the background. So yeah, first of all, <coughs> I would like to explain um, what kind of features we can measure with the linear height. So here you can see on the drawings, so I would like to use this as a pointer, as old school. So uh, you, can, you can measure for sure height, diameter, distances, such kind of features. So, uh, but additionally, you can make um, 2D uh, parameters. You can measure 2D parameters. For example, the pitch circle diameter here can be calculated with four, uh, four holes or five holes, something like this. So you can calculate um, an angle or the direct distance between different holes in two coordinates. So later on, I will show you how to do this. Uh, yeah, something else, you can do maximum measurement, you can do minimum measurement, you can do maximum minus minimum measurement, which is a range. Uh, for example, for a run out or something like this, if you would like to know um, let's say uh, the straightness or the form deviation of uh, any kind of surface, such kind of things. So, and additionally, you can, um, you can measure perpendicularity and straightness. So this is something I would like to show you later on. Okay, so what is the next step? So the next step is uh, linear height, which is here on the table, is uh, the model with a grip. So that means you can see here, put the camera a little bit beside. So here is a grip, and uh, with this grip, you can move the linear height on the granite table. That means here is a switch, the red one. If you put on the switch, so you can move the linear height with the air floating system very easily on the granite plate. So that's the model we have here on the table. So there is another model without the grip, which is a little bit cheaper than this one here. There is no grip, and if you would like to move the instrument, the height gauge on, uh, on a granite plate, you have to use this switch here to move the instrument. So accuracy, performance, everything is the same. The only difference is the grip, that's it. So uh, what is the specification of the linear height? So this is on my next slide. So first of all, we have a slider stroke of uh, 600 millimeter. This one here. So, and I told you, this one is a high accuracy measurement instrument. So first of all, the uh, digital step of this instrument is a 0 0.1 micron. And the length accuracy is this one here. 
which is really extraordinary on the market. So furthermore, we have a specification of the repeatability. So um, repeatability on a plane, on a surface, and a, repeat, a repeatability uh, inside a hole. So, and uh, we have specification for perpendicularity. This is after compensation, after correction. So, and we have a straightness specification, which is a four micrometer. Uh, this is a mechanical uh, straightness. So, uh, if we are speaking about uh, standard assessing, what is delivered together with the machine? Uh, so, first of all, for sure, we have a, let's say, such kind of uh, AC adapter. Um, can be used during the measurement or can be used to charge uh, the integrated uh, uh, battery pack, accumulator pack. So this is, a, um, let's say, AC adapter 12 volt. I will put it here beside. So and then, uh, for sure, we have the integrated accu pack. It's integrated in the controller box. So there is no need to show this in detail. And uh, furthermore, we have here the eccentric probe, which is here, you can see, already integrated in the machine. So this standard probe has a diameter of a five millimeter. So, and usually, uh, let's say around about 70, 80% of the measurement task, usually you can, uh, you can use this one here. So we have the setting block, this one here, let me show you. That's the setting block. So this setting block can be used to calibrate the diameter of the, of the probe. So, for sure, I said this one is a five millimeter probe, but it's not exactly five millimeter. And later on for compensation, we need to know uh, exactly the diameter of, the, of this probe here. That's why we have the uh, setting block. So, and last but not least, we have a dust cover, this one here. So um, the machine usually is not used in a laboratory, for sure it can be used in the laboratory, but usually the character, characteristic of the machine is to use it in a production line, yeah, on site. So the worker is coming with the workpiece, put it on the granite plate, and is doing some, some measurements. Yeah? So, and um, that's why uh, in, the, in the production line, usually there is a um, rough environment, there is a water, there is a dust cutting fluid, and after a working day, it's, it's good to protect the machine with a dust cover. Yeah, that's it. So, okay, what else? Um, yeah, I told you uh, or the, 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 um, one main characteristic of the machine, I already said, is a high accuracy measuring instrument. So um, that's good to know. But additionally, this machine is really very, very easy to use. So uh, after a couple of, not minutes, but maybe after one hour, two hours, so it's uh, very easy to, to do the first measurements. Yeah, you know, to, to make a part program or something like this. Yeah, so very easy. So I, that's why I would like to explain uh, the controller box a little bit more in detail. First of all, uh, you see this is um, a 5.7 inch um, LCD TFT display, and it's a color display. So that means uh, very easy to understand. Later on, I will speak a little more about this, but. Um, first of all, let's speak about the keyboard here, the integrated keyboard. And you can see we have different colors of the keys. So we have the blue ones, what does it mean? So with the blue ones, it's a possible to, to do measurements. Yeah? Very easy, height measurement uh, or diameter measurement, distance measurement, uh, maximum measurement, minimum measurement, uh, maximum minus measurement, uh, maximum minus a minimum measurement. So it's a very easy to understand what to do. So this is this area of the keyboard. So the other area here, that's the second one. So um, this area is uh, numerical keys for sure, but you have here some other uh, functionalities like statistical ev uh, evaluations, or you can, uh, you can uh, start a learn program or you start to learn a program. You can start to execute a part program. You can edit part programs. Oh, what else? You can uh, switch on tolerance measurement because this is uh, possible as well. So, and you can make a 2D measurement. You can make print out settings of the, of the machine. Uh, for example, the language. Uh, we have here in the controller box, there are 17 different languages integrated. 
So that means, uh, yeah, in, for, it means for Europe that uh, almost all popular languages are integrated in the machine. So uh, what else? Uh, we have the alphabetical keys. So alphabetical keys, I think there is no need to explain in detail with the alphabetical keys. For example, you can give a name of a part program or you can uh, give a comment uh, in a part program or, or something like this. So that's why we have the alphabetical keys. Um, the LCD TFT display itself, I already said, is very easy to understand because all important information uh, is integrated in the screen. So we have here uh, what kind of measurement mode we have. So here at the moment we are in the normal mode. This is equivalent to a single measurement. Later on I will show you. And we have information about time and date. So uh, this is a mandatory information. So we have here the information about the status of a machine. This is very important for the user because here is information about the battery life, information if, just for example, if the probe is already calibrated, if we have uh, tolerance functionality switched on or switched off, such kind of information is here in the, in the color display. What else? So this is the actual position of the, um, of the, uh, of the slider. So this is a measurement we did before, the information about the result, set coordinate of a height. So in here you can see that there is a tolerance comparison. So you can see the, the position of the measurement in a tolerance band very easily and very clear. So it's green, that means, yeah, inside of tolerance. And we have here some additional information for the user. What is the next step to do? So please go uh, start the measurement or press zero or whatever. Yeah? So this is the information for the user, what is to do. Yeah, the next step is I would like to do some single measurements. So this is a common situation in the production line. Someone is coming to the granite plate, takes a part and is doing some measurements. So nothing special, no part problem, just a single measurement. So let's do it. Uh, yeah, but first of all, uh, I switched on the machine. Yeah? And um, the first step is to uh, set the zero point, origin point. So it could be on the granite plate, and usually it's on the granite plate. So this is our reference point, our reference plate. So that means I would like to put zero point on the granite plate, origin point. So let's do this. So and then you can see the machine is moving. That's it. Now we have the zero point on the granite plate. So next step will be, okay, this is my first start. So I, I in, the, in the early beginning, I, I put a new probe inside. So the first, what I have to do is to make a probe calibration. Okay, let's do. So I will put this one. So, and then I use the setting, the setting block for this. So you can see the machine is moving up this surface and then on the next one, that's it. So we can have a look at the controller. Look here. So now you can see that we are in the one dimensional mode. So the origin uh, is okay. And we have a calibrated probe integrated in the machine. And the diameter of the probe is yeah, let's say five millimeter, 4.99, blah, 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 something like this. Okay. So the next step will be to make uh, any kind of measurements. So as I told you, a common situation in the workshop. So I will put this one here somewhere else. No. So and the next step will be, I will put the camera a little bit here and you can see So the next one is a diameter measurement. Okay. 
So I would like to, to move the camera a little bit so then you can see how to do a diameter measurement. So because I would like to do a second one, I would like to measure a second circle. So, okay, the next one. Well, let's calculate the distance between the two circles. So, distance between circle number one and circle number two. So, now I would like to show you. So, you can see that the Z component from the symmetry point of the two circles is 87 millimeter, and the distance between the two circles is 105 millimeter. So this is information I get from the display. So next one is the inner distance. and outside distance. So this is just single measurement. So which is a common style in the production. So however, um, single measurement 2D mode is a possible. So I can show you this one as well. So you can see here we have a workpiece with the different holes inside. So and maybe we are interested in the pitch circle diameter or a distance, direct distance between the different holes. So this is a two-dimensional problem. But in fact we have a 1D height measuring instrument. So how to do this? So very easy just we have to rotate the workpiece. So first of all, we have to measure Z component, and then we have to rotate the workpiece and measure the other one, which is the X component. So I would like to show you this. Okay, I switch to two-dimensional mode. So and the controller box is asking, please measure first of all Z component. Okay. I will use the circles, maybe three circle is a minimum uh, for a pitch circle diameter. Let's do the measurement of three circles. Next one. And the last one. So next step, I rotate the workpiece. Press again to the measurement. And the controller box is asking, please measure X component. OK. Rotation, I rotated the workpiece clockwise. That means rotation angle is a minus 90 degrees. And measure the three circles again. Second one. And the third one.
So that's it. So the next one is I would like to make calculations. For example, the pitch circle diameter. I'm interested in this one. So I go to calculation. Ah, sorry. First of all, I have to finish the 2D measurement. Okay, that's it. So a next step, I would like to do calculations. So I will take the camera to show you the different possibilities. So I told you I would like to do pitch circle diameter. This is one here, number seven. Or direct distance, let's do this at the second step. So number four is a direct distance between two circles um, I measured before. Okay, let's take number seven. So pitch circle diameter, here you can see all the three circles have been measured. So I take the first one and this one and all the circles in between were taken to calculate the pitch circle diameter, which is a 46 millimeter. So, and the um, related Z component and the related X coordinate. So another possibility is, I told you, number four, this is a direct distance. Direct distance, for example, between the first measured circle and the second one. So here you can see the direct distance of the circle number one and two is a 27 millimeter. So very easy to understand. So the next step is uh, if the customer has uh, many different, uh, many work pieces of the same kind. So then it makes sense to write a part program because later on you would like to execute the part program. All these parts are, they, they, they have the same features, some diameters, some heights to measure. So, and then it is the best to write a part program. And this I would like to show you. So first of all, we go into the 1D mode. So, and I would like to start the learn mode for this part program. So I say teach, and I have to give a proper name for this part program. Here I would like to call this, yeah, just let's say two. Okay, this is the name of the part program. Any kind of comment if you want, not necessary, but possible. So we can say, okay, I ignore this, no comment. And now we are in the teach mode, or in other words, in the learn mode. So all the steps I will do from now on are registered in the controller box as a part program. Okay, let's start first of all the measurement of the total height. Okay, and let's say two circles. The same we did before in the single mode is the best. So circle number one and circle number two. So then the inner distance, the same what we did before. And outside distance. So that's it so far. I would like to stop the part program. Okay teach, stop the part program, yes, okay. So now my colleague is coming with a lot of work pieces, so no problem for me, because the part, part program is already stored in the controller box. So I would like to execute the part program. Okay, no problem. So I say run the part program. So I select my work piece, which is, or my part program, uh, which has a name two, I said, yes, execute. 
one repetition at the moment. Okay. So when you can see all what I have to do is to move the workpiece. There is no need to, to touch the controller box anymore because um, these are the pre-learned, pre this is a pre-learned procedure. So on the inside distance. So that's it so far. So this is a learn mode, execute a pre-learn part program. Okay, so far. The next step, I would like to speak a little bit about the accessories. So I already told you about standard accessories, but we have optional accessories, many optional accessories as well. So here you can see a selection of some accessories. Uh, usually uh, the uh, optional accessories are probes or stylus. So we have, for example, the depth measurement probe. I will show you the application of this one later on. Or we have the uh, tapered probe, tapered style, this one here. Uh, if you have a perforated plate, um, and you would like to know the distance, center to center distance of a, such kind of perforated plate, or you would like to, to, to measure, let's say, a distance of a, of a hole, yeah, of different uh, screw holes. So this uh, measurement with the tapered probe is not so accurate, but I think sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's okay, it's enough. So you have here the disc probes, such kind of things. You have here some uh, different uh, coaxial probes with different diameters. Or uh, this one maybe is interesting for user of coordinate measuring machines. Um, this is a um, um, uh, yeah, connection unit or a, uh, adapter for M3 or M2 uh, CMM styles with a Ruby contact point, for example. So here is a, is a holder for an indicator for perpendicularity measurement. I would like to explain later on. So what else? So this is a um, eccentric stylus, a standard one, which has a diameter of five millimeter, you already know. So, and here you can see some applications with CMM styles. So this is a, um, a disc styly. This is the holder here, M3 screw here inside. Or this is another one, uh, a Ruby contact point with uh, let's say five millimeter or four millimeter diameter. So this is a very flexible application with this uh, adapters. So, um, yeah, we have here, we have a, um, a set of probes, so this is a holder here. So all together, this is available in one set. I will show you this one here. A few seconds. So this is a one set of probes taken from the CMMs. So with a different style diameter with extensions, uh, disc probe and uh, spherical probes. So this is available. Uh, as an optional accessory. Yeah, the next step, I would like to show you how to do perpendicularity measurement because sometimes a customer would like to know uh, perpendicularity or straightness of a, of a workpiece. So, and uh, for this, I would like to, to change the probe because we need this uh, probe with the um, integrated um, digital indicator. So this is a probe here, and you can see this is an ordinary uh, Mitotoyo indicator, Digimatic indicator. So the digital step of this one is a one micron, and uh, yeah, you can use this very easily. 
So you can use another one. It doesn't matter. Important is that there is a digimatic data output and you have to connect this digimatic data output to the controller box of the, of the linear height because um, the information from the indicator, the measured value, is going to the controller box and the controller box is using this result to calculate perpendicularity or straightness. Huh? So I will put this one here inside instead of the standard probe. So you can see here, I will take it out. I will put this one inside here, like this. So, and I have to remove some weights because altogether the holder with the integrated indicator is a heavy weight. So we have to remove the counterbalance weights. This one here. And I have to connect this one here to the controller box of the linear height. So this one is a very, very small work piece. So I prefer another one just to show you the application. So this one is a, a granite reference surface, a granite uh, cylinder. And here I can show you the uh, measurement of a perpendicularity or straightness very easily. So first of all, I will change this one here. So I must change the probe. This is the first I have to do. So I go to the probe menu and I say, okay, from now on, I have an integrated indicator here. Okay. So maybe I would like to put the camera here. So, okay. Next step will be, I go to perpendicularity measurement. It's this one. So I say, okay, start position for measurement can be, let's say 100 millimeter, that's okay. So, and uh, this question here is about uh, the pitch. The pitch of, um, let's see, I think I must just a little bit. So, okay. So the pitch of the uh, measurement points. So the pitch should be 20 millimeter. So, and the length should be, let's say, 200. We have enough space. So, and here you can see the measurement of a perpendicularity. Okay, so if we have a look on the controller box, what kind of result? So we have a perpendicularity of 6.3 microns. This one here is the angle to the granite plate. And this one is the information um, of the straightness. So you can see here, there are other possibilities we can see. So this is a display of the perpendicularity or the display of the straightness. So this is additional information in form of a, of a graph. Okay. So this was a perpendicularity measurement. So the next one, I would like to show you how to use a depth stylus or what is a depth stylus. So sometimes it's not so easy to, to, how to say, to, to go with the standard probes deep inside or to measure the height somewhere. So that's why we have the depth stylus. That's this one here. So, and with the depth stylus, you can go, uh, yeah, on top of a workpiece to measure any kind of depth. So this connection here, 
is a standard standard contact element of an indicator. So that means you can use any kind of contact element taken from an indicator. For example, a knife edge, or you can use uh, different kinds of a flat surface, different diameter, such kind of things. So this can be integrated here in this, let's say, contact, uh, yeah, contact screw. So I will take this one out, back on the table. So I take this one out. So, and I connect this one here into the, into this connection hole here. Oh, just a little grubbly. Oh. That's okay so far. Okay, next step. Uh, I change the probe. So, when I select, I'll show you this one. So here you can see the different probes. This one is the indicator. This here is a tapered probe, cylindrical probe, and so on. So number three is a depth measuring probe or depth measuring stylus. So I select this one. So now you can see here automatically the controller box is asking for the RBS origin point because at the moment it's unknown. That's why. I put the workpiece here and I would like to set the reference point on the surface here. Reference point setting. Oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. First of all, I have to put the weights back to the linear height because this one is not so heavyweight. Okay. So So this is a reference point. And now I would like to measure the depths of my holes. For example, with this one. or the other one. So this is a typical application for the depth measurement probe. So the next one is a tapered probe. So again, I have to change the probe. So for the tapered probe, I need another reference setting block because I need the offset of this one here to the granite plate. So I will put, you can see here, there is a special hole is integrated in the setting block and there is a value is written on the setting block. So, and based on this value, I can put in the offset of this tapered probe into the controller box. This is important to do. Put this one here a little bit beside. Take one of this out. And change again the probe. So I select the tapered probe. So, okay, next one. I 
like with this one here in front of the tapered probe. So, and the controller box is asking for the offset value, which is written on the side setting gauge. So here we have a 69 point, 69.785. So that's it. That means this one is now, let's say, calibrated. Next step will be, okay, I will do some measurements. For example, as I told you, of a perforated plate. So I select circle measurement. Go here inside and press enter. That's it. Next step is second one, circle measurement. Go inside, press enter. That's it. And now I can calculate distance to distance of the two measured circles. So I select distance and I take hole number one and hole number two. So I will take the camera here to show you what's going on. So that means the distance between the two measured circles is 8.35 millimeter. So very easy. Okay, so uh, here is an example you can see, which is an example uh, if the customer is, or if you are interested in the distance of the screw holes. So as I told you, accuracy is not so high, uh, but this is reasonable for this application. So let's uh, have a look at the backside of the instrument. So what kind of interface we have, what kind of, uh, let's say, um, connections we have. So first of all, we have a serial output. So a serial output can be used to send the data directly to Excel or directly to any kind of uh, uh, professional SPC software. I will show you this later on. The second interface here is a digimatic interface. Uh, you have already seen that I connected um, the uh, cable of, um, of an indicator to the controller box. We would like to make perpendicularity measurement. Then I have to use the Digimatic input connector. So this is a USB memory stick. USB memory stick can be used to store part programs on the stick or measurement results on the stick. So later on you can go to the PC and send the data from the USB stick uh, via CSV format to the PC. And last but not least, this is a connector for a, a high speed, um, let's say, a small high speed uh, serial printer, which can be connected to the machine. Or you can connect a, um, a page printer, A4 page printer, to this instrument to have, a, let's say, A4 print out of the measurement results. So this is possible as well. So next step, I would like to show you, for example, to, to send data, measure data uh, via a small interface directly to Excel. So this interface here is a HID interface. That means we connect serial or we use a serial output of our linear height, connect this one to the small interface and this one we can connect directly to the PC, to USB uh, uh, connector of the PC. So the format is a keyboard format. That means there is no need to install any kind of software or driver. It's just a plug and play solution. Take it in the PC and automatically directly send measured data to Excel applications. So this is very easy. I have the interface here. That's why I would like to show you how to do this. But first of all, I would like to, uh, let's say, use standard stylus. Wow. 
So I have to change the probe again to the standard one. Okay, so I take the PC. So, and here you can see that on this PC already we, we have Excel software available, Microsoft Excel software. So, and this one here is a small interface which is the HID interface, human interface device, or in other words, it's a keyboard interface. Very easy, just plug and play. Connect this one here to the interface. And this one here, I would like to connect to the linear height. So, okay. That's it. Okay. So I and I will do some measurements just to show you how to transfer the data. For example, just to do a height measurement or circle diameter uh, measurement. So height measurement, maybe. So when you can see here, I'll show you on the, on the screen of the PC, this is a measured result. So automatically sent to Excel. So that means this data here will be sent to Excel. Or for example, circle diameter. So in this case, you have two values in the PC. First of all, this is a set component from the from the uh, circle, and the second one is a diameter from the circle. Very easily. So additionally, as I already explained, you can use an uh, uh, ordinary USB stick to save part programs or to save, um, let's say, measured result. Now later on, you can go to the PC from the production line to the PC, and you can put the USB stick into the PC, send the data uh, via CSV format to the PC, to Excel, for example. So this is a typical example here. So uh, a result of uh, two, uh, uh, two part programs, execution of two part programs, and uh, after this, I sent this uh, very easily to Excel. So this one here is a receipt printer you can use. This is a very small one, a high-speed receipt printer. So with this, you can print the data out, measurement data, tolerance, judgments, or a histogram or something like this. So very small information is a SAMA printer. Or you can use a, a page printer for sure. A page printer you can use uh, if you would like to have uh, A4 format. So, and this information is, uh, let's say, on a, on, a, on a bigger paper. Yeah, finally, I would like to inform you about our promotion we have at the moment. So, this is a promotion about uh, two instruments, about our linear height and the QM height, as well as in the promotion inside. So, and we have a very good price inside. Uh, so, you can buy this if you have no, uh, let's say, um, existing old equipment in your company, so then we have a good price. Or on the other hand, we have a trade-in campaign, 
That means if you have an old instrument from me to Toyo or any other brand, you can send to me to Toyo and uh, it will be replaced uh, by a very good price. So please have a look in the internet about this promotion here. So it's valid until, uh, I think uh, it's valid until March next year. Let me see. Yes, it's uh, end of March 2021. So, and um, yeah, I, from my point of view, it's a very, very, very good in, uh, offer we have at the moment. Please use this one here. Yeah, this was my demonstration of um, the linear height. Usually, um, I, the time was limited, but uh, I think I, I already explained the main functionality of the instrument. And maybe you got a feeling about how to use the linear height and what you can do with the linear height. Again, I would like to underline the features of the linear height. So first of all, it's really high accuracy instrument. It's very easy to use. We have a lot of functionality inside. Yeah? So, and these are the three main features of, of our linear height. And for sure, we have the best price. So this is always. So take care and goodbye and see you soon, maybe for the next live demonstration. Bye-bye.